Good morning, friends, and welcome back to NPTEL online lectures on effective writing. In the previous lectures, we have already talked about report writing, and prior to that, we have also discussed other forms of writing, namely business writing, academic writing, and then report writing. Now is the time since this lecture is going to be the last lecture of this course, I have termed this lecture as creative writing. And you might be thinking as to other forms of writing, are they not creative? That may be a general question, that may be a query. No, my dear friends, all forms of writing are creative. But when we talk about creative writing, it actually is a very vast field. And I have focused in this lecture how creative writing is different in order to let you know because majority of people are today writing for other purposes and creative writing is completely an isolated field where unless and until you are interested, you do not try to enter into. That is why we shall be discussing in a very short way what are the ways of creative writing, what are the modes of creative writing, so that it can tell you how your writing, which you are doing in your everyday life, in your everyday business life, how they can be uh, differentiated. Now, when we talk about creativity, because creative writing is some way or the other linked with creativity. So, there might be a question in all of your minds, what actually is creativity? My dear friends, when you do anything new, when you do anything in an innovative manner, that is creativity. Creativity can be defined as the act of turning new and imaginative ideas into reality. Whatever you see today, first of all, it might have occurred in somebody's mind and his mind might have been stirred because he might be thinking of giving the world something new. Whatever it is, no? even the email and the uh, WhatsApp and then uh, all the uh, various handles that you are exposed to, they are also creative. But when we talk about creativity per se, we are actually going to discuss creative writing and this naturally takes you back to some of the forms of literature. Creativity actually is characterized by the ability to perceive the world in new ways, in innovative ways. For example, when you look at the sky, when you look at the rainbow, when you look at the water, when you look at the seas, all of you may have different responses. It cannot be one and that is actually the beauty of creativity. Everyone looks at things in his or her own manner and how they create responses in him that is his or her creativity. So, creativity enables to make connections between seemingly unrelated phenomena. Those who are exposed to poetry and other forms of writing may find that poets often think of things which commoners cannot think and that is why poets are more creative, is not it? And then one of the ways of creativity is also to generate solutions. Now, you might be thinking, can the forms of art also generate solutions? Yes. Maybe they are not so effective, maybe they cannot provide an easy solution, but at least they can show some sort of alternative, my dear friends. And that is where creativity lies. A creative writer, because all of us cannot be creative writer, but then a creative writer you will find will try to show you things in a different way. Why? Why could a rose appear to be the face of one's beloved. No? Why could a poet say, my love is like a red, red rose? Why could somebody say, while comparing the face of one's beloved, why could somebody say, 
are seas as beautiful as day. So, what we need to understand is when we talk about creativity, we are actually going to express an ideas in an imaginative ways. Imagination is one of the key ingredients of creativity. You first imagine, maybe everyone is not going to listen to, everyone cannot be convinced, but then this is your thought, this is your response to things and creativity or creative writing is the art of making things up or putting a creative splash maybe on history as in creative non-fiction. Even somebody writes a non-fiction there also lies the creativity. Creativity is actually an art form which can transport you because suppose you are sitting by the side of a river or you are on a seesaw and when you look at uh, the waves coming up and down, do not you think? that within you also goes certain feelings, feelings which are already hidden, feelings which lie at some corner or in your subconscious level and they are suddenly stirred. So, what creative writing can do? It can actually transport us to a new realm inspired by our mental meanderings. At times, when uh, you want to uh, have a different taste, what do you do? When you are at leisure, what do you do? You actually try to read something that can transport you somehow or uh, the other in a different world. So, there can be different forms of creativity, there can be different forms of creative writing, fine. It can uh, be a medium to express feelings and emotions. That is actually the main concern of creative writing. When you were writing a scientific writing or a report writing, you might have seen that there was no room available for feelings and emotions. When you are giving a presentation, when you are writing your script for presentation, there was no room for feelings and emotions. When you are writing a business letter, no room for emotions and feelings. But when you are writing something in a creative manner, these feelings and emotions often uh, come into picture. It is totally different from the cold hard facts as we do an academic writing. In academic writing you will find uh, there is no scope for all these emotions, feelings, psyche etcetera. Now, when we talk about creative writing, of course, my aim here is not to convert people into creative writers, but then to show them uh, certain ways as to how they can understand creative writing. My dear friend, the pleasure lies not only in becoming only a creative writer, but the pleasure also lies in enjoying a work of creative writing. When somebody reads a poem or somebody reads a novel, one actually derives the pleasure and this pleasure can also go a long way to motivate you, to persuade you to inspire you, to satisfy you or also to provide you a sort of relief because creative writing has a sort of therapeutic, no? it actually has a sort of therapeutic value meaning thereby you are full of sorrow and you will find when you read a poem and if the poem is some way or the other linked to the feelings of yours, it actually has got a sort of relieving touch it actually can help you recover. That is why when somebody goes to watch a movie and comes back, you will find for some amount of time at least he has a different sort of refreshment. So, all writing at its best as I have been saying is creative writing, writing a business letter uh, in the best possible manner to convince about a product or to convince about an action that you are going to take that is also creative. Of course, uh, there is no question of bringing emotions and feelings there. Creative writing as a discipline has emerged in several universities all around the globe and it is a discipline which can create synthesis between work in universities and non-academic professions as well in many universities are also offering courses on creative writing. Even here we are also offering a course on creative writing. So, creative writing actually allows us to tell the story of our spaces. 
you might at times be thinking, can we really tell the story of our spaces? Now, all the books that are there in your library uh, or on the web, you will find there are many books and they have been written so creatively that actually they not only entice, but actually they make us wonder at times also. Now, you might also be thinking because sometimes or the other, within all of us, as I have been saying, there is a writer, there is a creator. So, can creativity be measured? It is difficult though. It is very difficult to measure creativity, is not it? But then there are certain things through which you can measure creativity as uh, said by psychologists and they actually talk about four factors which actually can help us measure creativity. The very first is fluency. By fluency in, in literature, we mean spontaneity. I mean you are going to say something, you are going to write something and it actually appears to be a sort of uh, natural flow. No, so fluency and then flexibility. I mean when you are thinking of creativity, it actually should not conform to rigidity. It actually should have a sort of flexibility. That is why you will find all forms of creative writing. No, you cannot predict as to where it will end, how it should be written. There are different ways and literature is replete with such examples of different forms of creativity. And then when we talk about creativity or when you are going to measure creativity, we also should see that it is originality. It is originality. As I had said earlier that a person responds to an event or a thing differently and that is where lies one's creativity. When you are uh, responding to something, some event, some action, you know, uh, some natural objects or whatsoever, your response is different from others. That is where the originality lies. And even when there is originality, that actually has to be elaborated, that actually has to be expressed. Uh, one writer goes to the extent of saying uh, that the best writing is always buried in the depth of our hearts, but then they actually need to be brought out. Now, there are some other factors also and you might be thinking what can creativity do? Creativity can actually provide a sort of intellectual leadership, intellectual leadership. Maybe what you are reading today might not have been acceptable. Uh, I mean one or two centuries ago, but if it is still persists, if it is still exists, that is only because of its creativity. All the good works of literature which you come across today and were written centuries ago, they stand the test of time because they had some, um, not only some amount of intellectual uh, leadership, but also certain things that actually keep regurgitating, repeating throughout and that has actually a touch of universal appeal. Then creativity, one aspect of creativity is also sensitivity to problems. When you look at a particular object, a particular action, a particular event, your reaction, you no, know, sometimes or the other, you will find you become very sensitive. No, you become very sensitive and one of the ingredients of creativity is that to all the problems, you not only look at the problems only with the solution, but you also see to it that how it will affect, that is, that is what we mean by sensitivity to a problem and ingenuity, I mean clarity, expressing things in a natural manner. Sometimes you will find that there are certain things which may appear unusual because creativity is associated with imagination. So, imagination at time can be wild, imagination at time can be unusual. Literary books are replete with such examples when a beloved can be compared to depending upon how the writer, writer's reactions. So, sometimes the writer portrays in a very elevated manner, sometimes in a very depressed manner sometimes in a debased manner. That is why many poets while explaining or while describing the faces of beautiful dams, they at times not only have poured cruelty, but then at times they have also gone to the extent of thinking about the helplessness. There are many uh, poems which you can come across. It is very difficult to tell you uh, all the examples. For example, in one of the poems uh, by Andrew Marvel, 
It is actually a poem entitled to his choir mistress, where the writer says, had I but the time, fine. Now the question is that the writer imagines that if I had the time and the world, and then he goes on to enlist a lot of things that he could have done for his beloved, but then the beloved is not able to understand. So that is why at times you will find that there is some unusualness because there are certain comparisons also made. For example, Dunn actually compares the lovers to a pair of uh, the two legs of a compass, isn't it? Eliot actually uh, links an evening uh, just like a patient etherized upon the table. So, this may appear quite unusual, but then uh, there is a usefulness in it, usefulness in the way that our minds are propelled to think and to go beyond. That is why uh, how imagination works in creativity. Then through creativity, you can find a, a sort of artistic achievement and that is why when somebody writes something, one is inspired. One may be inspired by an albatross, one may also be uh, inspired by the sea waves, one may also be inspired by the destruction, one may also show his reaction against the anomalies of the world. So, at times it has been seen that creativity also calls into question some resistance and at times it has also been seen that many artists have also been called propagandists because when they say something new that is not acceptable to the society at a particular time then naturally they actually show different reactions. Some of the creativity also appears to be a sort of madness sometimes or the other because you know it is a question of emotions and emotions can be wild at times also. If you have an interest in literature, you will come across all these things. But here, I am actually simply confined to tell you how creative writing is different from other forms of writing. And what are the types of creative writing? Naturally, most of you think that when somebody talks about creative writing, one is only talking about poems, stories, novels and all. And what are they? But there are some among you who might be thinking of crafting who might be thinking of writing things in a beautiful manner so that it can be creative. Shakespeare's works are always creative because they have stood the test of time. Likewise, many other poets and dramatists, their works are also still popular and they are being, uh, they are being used, they are being used, they have been prescribed in various universities. Now, when we talk about creative writing and when we think of defining it, we can also see other things which are not considered creative. There are certain things, for example, um, poetry, no, the world of poetry. Now, only when we talk of poetry, you know, there is no limitation because there are several forms of poetry and it will take, you know, so many, you know, months and years to discuss them. And then there is prose, prose is actually, uh, if, if poetry is written in verse, if poetry is written in rhythm, Proge is written in a very prosaic manner, I mean written in sentences and all and then we have drama, then epics, short stories, novels, screenplays, songs, uh, then uh, TV scripts and all. So, the world has actually uh, been beautiful only because of creative writing my dear friends. Now, how is it different? How creative writing becomes creative? That is only because of certain literary devices and that we shall be discussing. Uh, it is very difficult to discuss all of them my dear friend, but then those having an urge, those having a wish to write things creatively, for them there are certain guidelines that should be kept in mind and then we will uh, uh, move towards uh, some of the literary devices that can make your writing creative. Creative writers first actually should be creative readers. There, there are people, there are writers who say, that if you really want to rewrite, first you must develop a taste for reading because it is only reading that will stir you towards writing, into writing, that will convert you into writing. The more you read, the more your thoughts will be ignited, will be stirred. As a creative writer, one should always aim at bringing pleasure because nobody, you know, you do not write simply to satisfy yourself. And you do not get acceptability unless and until 
others respond to it favorably or unfavorably that depends because that depends upon the relationship as well. So, it aims at bringing pleasure and the purpose to the lives of our readers. Have you not at times found that when you are reading a piece of literature, sometimes you start putting yourself in the position of the protagonist, in the position of the characters. Sometimes you start thinking how could he know uh, that this is my story, my dear friend, he did not know. He actually, it was his sort of imagination and since every literary writer, whatever he says, he talks about man, he talks about the events all around, in a way he is creating a bigger picture and in that bigger picture, your story, my story, other story, his story, his, uh, her story and all these things are then rolled into one and that is why we find this is actually a sort of universal phenomena. Creative writing leads us to an alternate awareness. When you read something new, you actually find uh, that some of the hidden aspects of your life, some of the hidden emotions of yours which are buried within as I said, they uh, also get a sort of opening and through creative writing, you are providing a sort of outlet. That is why I say every man is a creative writer, within every man there is a creator. Fine, maybe he is not a creative writer, but then he is creating. It is actually a therapeutic benefit, I mean a benefit that actually relieves you, a benefit that actually provides a sort of exercise not only to your mind, but to your heart. The key to writing is not to wait. Many people uh, at times think when they are stirred by some imagination or emotion, they think that they will wrap it up, they will clothe it into words and for that they wait. My dear friends, many authors have gone to the extent of saying that if an emotion or imagination comes to you even in late night, do not wait, please write only there because you never know that such experiences whether they are going to last longer or not. So, the key to writing writing is not to wait, not to let today slip away in the evanescent hope that tomorrow somehow we will have the knowledge, the real plan and the confidence to commence our story with a vivid elan and muscular gusto. No, my dear friend, creativity has got a spontaneity and this spontaneity has to be gathered because if you are aiming at writing something creatively, times come times go. Emotions are evoked, maybe those emotions are subsided. That is why there are completely a list of good poems which were written sometimes at the dead of night, sometimes in midnight when the writer might have been ignited. Uh, we, we remember uh, those who are familiar with English literature might remember that when Thomas Gray wrote Elegy written in a country churchyard, it was actually midnight and he actually someday or the other he was sitting uh, near a churchyard and then suddenly in his mind there came some emotions which actually overpowered him and he started writing and then he wrote the beautiful uh, poem Elegy written in a country churchyard. Anyway, now this art of writing or the craft of writing because creative writing is a craft as I have been saying that you actually have to make it different and distinct from other forms of writing and for that one has to use some literary devices. These literary devices can be categorized into two or three. Some way or the other a sentence written for a business and a sentence written for literature is different. Why? Because you use literary devices namely tropes, these are all tropes, you use simile you use metaphor, you use metonymy, you also use synecdoche, fine. Then you use irony, personification, hyperbole, light arts, fine. And then not only do you use fig, uh, use of tropes, but then you also come across the figures of speech. Sometimes when you write, you are making use of all these either in poetry or in prose or whatsoever. And sometimes when you are writing, you are also in order to create a sort of effect because your main concern is to create pleasure and you can create pleasure not only through speech, but also through sounds. So, sometimes 
you may use figures of speech like antithesis, chiasmus and apostrophe and then you may also use figures of sound. Whenever we talk of poetry naturally in our mind suddenly we feel a sort of rhythm, a sort of music and how that music can be created. It is not only the question of creating music, it is actually also the question of creating it in sentences and also in sentences with a desired effect. It is very difficult to talk about all of them, but then we shall take up some of the difficult ones. All of you know how you are making use of a simile and a metaphor. Simile is about the likeness, when two objects have the likeness, you actually uh, make use of simile. For example, uh, you say a uh, sea was as beautiful as a day, fine. Now you are using a uh, day and the day there becomes simile uh, with the use of as, like, something like that. When you talk about metaphor, you are actually referring to some person and you are associating it, but then you are associating it with an object or with some other person. For example, if we say he is a tiger or no, no, he is a lamb. So, with tiger and lamb, you are associating some connotative meanings that a person can understand. But then here, our concern is to talk about something which are different and then which are a bit difficult for uh, those uh, beginners who actually want to see and who want to understand how creative writing is different. So, let us have a look at metonymy and synecdoche, fine. A metonymy is actually a Greek word which actually means the change of name, the change of name. You know in literature we do not say things clearly as we have been saying things clearly in business writing, in academic writing, but in literature we say things in a very indirect manner and that is why these devices are going to be used my dear friend. So, when you talk about metonymy, it actually establishes relationships of closeness or contiguity. For example, when you say stage, you actually are meaning theatre. When you say the crown, you are actually meaning the king. When you say the bench, you are meaning the court. So, you are saying things, but you are saying things in a very indirect manner. And again, we have another device we call synecdoche. Synecdoche is a Greek word that actually have the meaning like interpreting together, interpreting alongside. When something is indirectly referred to, by naming simply a part to talk about the whole, then this is called synecdoche. For example, when you say an arm, you may mean so many things. When you say an arm, you may also mean weapon. When you say an arm, you also may mean chair. When you say oak, for example, here you can find with thunders from her native oak, she quells the flood below. Now, look at the word use of the word oak. Oak is a tree, all of us know. But then when we are talking about, uh, when, when you are referring to a sip, we are making use of oak, so oak. And how do you find that? You actually find that when you use the word quell, so because there is a sort of association. So, with thunders from a native oak, she quells the flood below. This is from Thomas Campbell's Ye Mariners of England. So, when we have, we are talking about creative writing, creative writing is different from other forms of writing only because of some literary devices being used depending upon your own interest as to which branch of literature, which branch of creative writing you are aiming at. Now, here is another term uh, very important, litotas, litotas, is not it? This is again uh, a Greek word which actually means which is which has come from litos meaning single, simple, meager and it is once again an indirect statement for emphasis when you do not because in literature you do not want to say things clearly or directly. When you want to say somebody either being very good or very bad, so what do you say? It was not very bad, it was not very bad, so meaning is it was very good. It was not very good, meaning is it was not very bad. Now, it can also be called as the use of double negatives, double negatives. Have a look at Jonathan Swift's The Tale of the Tub, a very famous book, fine. Uh, so, how, how the writer has made use of it, it can also be used in prose as well. I am not unaware how the productions of the Grub Street Brotherhood have of late years fallen under many prejudices. Now, look at the use of not unaware. So, there are two negatives, actually the meaning is not unaware means I am aware, is not it? So, when you want to say something, you are not saying things uh, clearly, but you are saying things in an indirect manner. 
my dear friend. Entire literature, even though we are trying to say something, we are trying to convince with some alternatives, with uh, some other ways and that is why indirectly. We also should understand that when you are writing something creatively, especially for literature, you can also produce as I have said a sort of musical effect and this musical effect can be produced not only by tropes, but also by figures of speech. Figures of speech are those through which we are actually making even small things appear better, small things appear more beautiful, appear bigger. No? So, we are actually making use of hyperbolic expressions. So, these hyperbolic expressions at and this can also be used in a negative way, in a positive way. Now, here is antithesis, antithesis, it is also a Greek word and its meaning is opposite meaning. When you are talking something uh, in a very opposite manner, fine uh, and for that you are to make use of contrasting ideas by opposing them. You all might have come across or you might be familiar with uh, the famous play of uh, Shakespeare uh, named uh, Hamlet. No? So, in Hamlet there is uh, one beautiful uh, passage where he says, to be or not to be that is the question whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer uh, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them. So, Hamlet is in a condition of conflict. He actually from his own position, he is actually trying to and you know the contrasting ideas is to be or not to be that is the question between existence and then in a in order to show his existence, what he should do? He actually uses contrasting images and says to oppose them, to up and by opposing and them, by opposing and them. So, this is actually an example of antithesis. Then there is another figure of speech named chiasmus comes from the Greek word uh, which actually means crosswise. When you are reversing a grammatical pattern just to create an effect, reversing, no? You are, you are changing, you know, bringing a sort of change only in the sentences. For example, by the day the frolic and the dance by night. You see how the structure has been changed beautifully and not only does it entertain you, but then again it actually creates a sort of effect and we all uh, go uh, for this effect. So, this uh, is uh, one line by Dr. Johnson's The Vanity of Human Wishes. You can in literature, you know, literature is replete with such examples of chiasmas. And then we also come to apostrophe. Apostrophe is uh, one such device through which you are going to address. Because my dear friends, as I have been saying that creative writing is based on imagination. Somebody dead, somebody deceased, somebody no more. And then in his honor, while remembering him, you are writing something where you are presenting him as if he is there. We can take lines from Julius Caesar where he says, Oh judgment, now see the abstract things are addressed here, Oh judgment thou art fled to Brutus breasts. Now, this is from Julius Caesar. Again, we can take an example uh, from Wordsworth when on the death of uh, Milton he says, Milton thou should be living at this hour. Milton is dead. But then the poets, uh, poet presents him as someone who is capable, who is alive and who is capable of understanding. So, through these figures of speech, you are going to create a sort of effect. Not only that will be relieving, refreshing, but then they will create pleasure. Then in literature, you will also come across figures of sound as in poetry you will find. So, sometimes, you know, it creates a sort of jingle effect. Sometimes uh, when you are reading that, you will find how the sounds have been created and the sounds can be either uh, vowel sounds or consonant sounds and these some of these devices are alliteration, assonance, consonance. When a writer usually repeats, when a writer usually repeats consonant sounds, no? when a writer usually repeats consonant sounds repetition of consonant sounds in the beginning of a word, no, repeats the consonant sounds in the beginning of the word, then it is called alliteration. For example, uh, from uh, uh, Coleridge's uh, rhyme of the ancient manner, the fair bridge blew, the fair bridge blew, 
bridge blue, the white foam blue. Now look at the effect. This effect is created on the first letter of the sound. Whereas when you talk about assonance, assonance is the repetition of the vowel sound. But then it is not in the beginning. It is either in the middle or in the end of words. Let us take uh, an example from uh, Wordsworth's uh, Two Daffodils, which is very famous. I wandered lonely as a cloud that fleets on high over vales and hills. So, that that floats on high over hail, vales and hills when all at once I saw a cloud, a host of golden daffodils. Now, look at the uh, sounds of O, fine, floats over host daffodils beneath trees, breeze. So, the repetition of the vowel sounds either in the middle or in the end, this is actually termed as assonance and consonance is the repetition of the vowel sound, uh, flip flop, crick crock, no, like that, slip slop, like that. So, these actually create a sort of jingle effect and that actually brings a lot of pleasure to the readers. Then we come to poetry, we have already been discussing it a lot. Uh, all I need to tell you is that when somebody is aiming to write poems, one should see uh, that one creates musical effect not only by uh, uh, sound, but by line, length, music, meters and literary devices. These lines either can be end stopped because uh, musicality and meter, these are the two things in poetry which are very important. For example, uh, when we talk about the end stopped lines, by end stop lines what we mean is the emotion or whatever the expression, the expression comes to an end in the line whereas when the this expression goes further in the other lines this is called enjambment, enjambment, fine, end stopped and enjambed. For here you can see over here is one example for Alexander Pope, a little learning is a dangerous thing. So, here we, we feel that we, the sense is completed. Drink deep or taste not the pear in spring, their sallow drafts intoxicate the brain and drinking largely sobers us again. So, in all these sentences we find that the thought gets completed in the line, fine, in the end of the line. But when the thought continues, then we, then we call it enjambment line. Uh, we have, I have taken two uh, quotes from uh, I mean two ages, one is by John Keats, you all uh, have heard the name of John Keats, a famous romantic poet. So, John Keats talk about, talks about beauty, whereas you see the contrast, Ellen Ginge, uh, Ginsberg, an American poem, he actually talks about distraction and you will find both these poets, they have actually created uh, in jammed lines and musicality in it. And here he says, a thing of beauty is a joy forever, the loveliness increases, it will never find you see the first line, even though the lines are lining, but then the meaning or the expression or the thought continues up to the second. And in Ellen Ging uh, Ginsberg's uh, Howl, which became very famous, Ellen Ginsberg was an American poet and who talked about the distraction. Uh, destruction because of capitalism and all and there also in the first line you do not find uh, the thought is completed, the uh, line continues, I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness, starving, hysterical, naked. So, it continues. So, when the line, when the meaning continues to the next line, it is called in jammed lines. Then we have prose my dear friend, all of you are uh, familiar with the prose and in prose writing comes not only the essays, prose, but then the novels and the uh, word novel uh, has uh, de been derived from novella which actually is an Italian word means uh, story and uh, the difference between the novel and the story is whereas a story is a shorter version, the novel is a larger version, a story is confined to one idea, one theme whereas uh, when you talk about uh, a novel, it can continue, it will be longer even, even in length and breadth it will be longer. A novel can be written uh, in uh, around 60,000 to uh, 70,000 words, whereas a short story can be written in 2,000, 3,000, sometimes 7,000 words like that. So, and then it is, there is another term called novelty, which is a work of fiction, which is lesser than a novel, but then longer than a short story. And then a drama, all of you are familiar with uh, drama, which is uh, actually uh, uh, a play 
and which is also written to entertain, but then there are uh, several components involved into it, character, dialogue, uh, no, uh, action, uh, then emotion and then there are scenes also divided. So, the drama word comes from uh, the Greek word drau which means to perform, drama is actually performed and the drama uh, uh, lies in dialogue and the exchange between the two, drama has got uh, multi voices. Uh, several requisites of the drama can be it is a spectatorial art whereas you cannot you know the novel is not a spectatorial art but then the drama is a spectatorial art because it depends upon the audience it is dramatic because there is lot of action there may not be action in a novel but in a drama there will be an action and then drama is a mode of performance a dramatic performance is clearly more than a reflection of the dramatic text. So, when the text is written the writer also has to see that if it is performed what are the requisites and then the material of the dramatist trade is imagination and dialogue. Sometimes you will find that even real things are portrayed through drama just in order that people can understand the reality. There can be different categories of drama, there can be different classifications of drama. Uh, since we are having a paucity of time and we are uh, in the last leg of this lecture, now is the time uh, to tell you one thing very important which uh, uh, one famous uh, novelist of the 20th century says, uh, somebody who wants to become a creative writer and uh, one who actually also wants to understand and enjoy literature and enjoy creative writing should believe in what Faulkner says, read, 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 read everything, trash, classics good and bad and see how they do it just like a carpenter who works as an apprentice and studies the master read, you will absorb it and when you have done that then write, if it is good you will find out if it is not throw it out of the window. My dear friends, you too as a prospective writer, as a creative writer whatever you are writing please see that before writing one should try to read a lot because reading is not a wastage, reading is an investment and every investment some way or the other will have the dividends and there can be no better dividend than the compliments that you receive from your audience from your readers and I hope you will all with all these lectures that have been delivered you will get if not too much you will get something that is worth preserving, something that is worth reading, something that is worth understanding. To keep you tuned to understanding all these that you have learned I welcome you all once again and thank you all for bearing very patiently with me and with this we come to the end of these lectures. I wish you all the best and also I say a goodbye, thank you very much.